Hoagie. Now I'm, I'm told uh, that uh, the way I'm going to keep Hoagie here is by giving him treats. So I'm just going to take instructions. So Hoagie's a ther certified therapy dog. And uh, what, what I wanted to share in this time is the importance of these therapy dogs. And they're kind of uh, sadly on hiatus right now. Are you familiar with the whole therapy dog thing? I, I mean, no, I'd like to be told. I really, I'm going to say no on that. So in our community, we have, there's uh, quite a big community uh, uh, in, of therapy dogs and they go out and, and uh, go to the schools and deal with special, special needs kids and such. And in our town, we had the Saugus High shooting made national news. And so the dogs were over there all the time. And, uh, and that's when we realized that Hoagie needed an Instagram account. So uh, everybody can just follow at Hoagie Therapy on Instagram because the kids are going, does Hoagie have an Instagram account? You know, well, <laughs> uh, he does now. And so you all can follow him. Uh, and uh, he's way cooler uh, watching him than me. Uh, but he's also certified at LAX Airport. And when my wife got him certified down there, I'm thinking, why in the heck does anybody want to voluntarily go to LAX? And then I realized that the dogs are able to go in and they have security clearance and they're able to really comfort uh, passengers and people. Uh, and of course, that's all shut down now, too. So I'm going to let Hoagie go so we can go talk uh, about some other 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 more pressing things. I, I want to do I, I want to make this little uh, time we have together a little bit upbeat, uh, despite the circumstances many of us are in. So uh, let's have at it. I need to be upbeat. I'm not feeling as upbeat. So this is good. So you, I mean, you look so good. You look healthy too. Healthy as hell. Like you're like, you're, you're working out. I can't get over how great you look. Many, many dog walks. I mean, we're, we are blessed to be in an area where there are hills and, and such where we can go and, and do uh, runs and uh, hiking, social distancing and, and all that. Yeah. I, I actually feel pretty good. I eat too much, you know. The mass, they say the hottest thing for the mass is really uh, for in front of the refrigerator. You know, that's the whole deal. Oh. <laughs> you know, where's my all mass? I got a few all masks here from All Made. I mean, these things are amazing. So uh, uh, in any event, but uh, we, we actually have, touching on the subject of mass, uh, here's my all mask. Oh, I want to see what it looks like because there's so many different okay, masks. Cool. Yeah, here. the all mask is really nice. It's made of their uh, proprietary uh, tri-blend material. Oh, with, um, um, oh, a wow. modal and organic U.S. cotton. And uh, there's a plastic water bottle in here somewhere. So uh, there you have it. Oh, or you can do oh, it. Right that's a nice there. looking mask. Well, yeah, no, it's, it, fits, it fits really good. I won't. Do the full, well, yeah. Hey, what the heck? I'll put it on. So uh, Ryan Moore is really good modeling these. That's a nice looking. That's a nice looking mask. Wow. Well, okay. So here's a pre. Here's a preview of the e newsletter that is going to come out tomorrow. The free promo tips e newsletter, and uh, it's it's entitled "You Can't See a Smile uh, Through a Mask." You can't. And I personally, one like you might be, you'd go in the store and you might do a little, you know, you don't have to say anything. You're smiling, but you can't see that in a mask. And I think that that's one of the downsides. We go out into the store and we see all different types of masks from, you know, kind of odd, you know, like evil, you know, whatever types of masks. And, and I really believe that you know, this is like a, a 2020 horror movie where we are now walking. We're all walking around like faceless, emotionless zombies wearing masks. And you couldn't even run. You know, this is like, it's, it's like a movie, but sadly it's reality. And we, we touch on some of that in the, in the newsletter that's coming out tomorrow. This is like a big plug for that, but we've really got some great content uh, from a few people that have shared some personal things and uh, uh, just, but th these are our times right now. It's just different. I think it's really, actually, a lot of people ask when I went to China in 2018, you know, because I don't speak the language, what it was like. And I said, oh, a smile was all you really needed in China to communicate because they're such beautiful people. So when you are in a store, you smile. Hi. <laughs> 
everyone would smile back and it was fine. As a matter of fact, there was one point where we were on the, the Metro and Alana and this other Asian girl, they didn't even know each other. They started laughing at, at me, but they were giggling and laughing and it was, they were getting hysterical laughing. And I'm like, not really happy because I'm like, what, what, like what? Like so I'm trying to look at the, what's going on in my face. But the connection that they saw them that make was just through that smile and giggling. So you were so right. And I kind of wish I had more crinkly eyes because that's the only thing we're going to see is like your eyes will show it. So, you know, I'm like, oh, but I wear glasses. So I had that whole conversation in my head the other day because so I, I decided I would just wave to people. So I'm in the grocery store going, hi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's just a new time. And, uh, and the other thing, in anticipation, look, Adrian, you and I, we go way back. You know, we're both nuts, okay? I posted, hey, if you want to watch two crazy people at, uh, you know, 1 o'clock my time, 4 o'clock your time, <laughs> Adrian and Jeff, we're both crazy. You know, we'll probably have nothing of value to share, maybe. <laughs> you got to see Hoagie. If nothing else, you got to see Hoagie. So that is, like, worth the price of admission. But, but I thought about it, and I thought, you know, well, what, what is a statement we want to make here? And one is, you know, look, I have, I'm have i wearing my uh, promo kitchen shirt. This was the winning T-shirt design. Uh, those who are not in the promo industry, and I know you have a, you're interviewing all different types of people. So, you know, your friends uh, may not, uh, uh, you know, know anything about the promo industry, or they, they might through you. But um, I've got uh, my this on to commemorate. This is amazing organization promo kitchen in our industry that uh you know connects people there's a mentoring program and all that we do a big event at our ppi expo and 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 i wonder is that going to happen again you know we we don't know what january looks like we don't know what august looks like. we don't know what anything looks like but also along the same lines i love my uh, my scoop you know which way is it so scoocon oh. you know, another amazing uh you know conference that's a great yeah. logo. It looks like a barcode oh, sticker. So cool. really yeah. cool. I mean, these guys are amazing, you know. And then, of course, you got the they scoo are. scoo bot. This is uh, this is from Monday uh, morning. My scoojo. Uh, oh, I love it. Morning, and now I'm on iced tea. I've got some passion tea in here. Uh, I drink <laughs> a lot. Yeah, <laughs> big big drinker there. <laughs> You're, you are you do so much. It's amazing. I actually like talking about the industry. First, I have to say. It is so brilliant, the promo show. I, I can't get over the brilliance of it. I was talking to a clear from TechWeld yesterday. And, you know, so like actually, so tomorrow I have planned to like go in and see um, who's open. But the, have you gone into the promo? Have you gone into any booths? Well, I actually tried to go in yesterday to a promo show booth, which was empty. And then uh, that particular supplier, I said, hey, you know, it went in empty. He goes, I had to go take care of the kids. Well, that's, that's just reality, okay? Like, okay, well, I don't know. Come back tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I, I think that it's it's interesting, um, and maybe worth touching on for a moment is how people are marketing in this industry. You know, suppliers who are normally on the road just doing amazing things. I, I you know, wrote a piece uh, some time ago about salute to our road warriors, our industry heroes who are out there making these connections. Paul Bellantone, you know, among the chief of the industry heroes, who's our, our uh, yeah, we love Paul, who is, uh, you know, the president and CEO of our trade association. This guy's everywhere. I mean, he's a champion for our industry. So these guys are on planes, you know, almost every day. And uh, so now what do they do? They, they can't. And they don't know what to do, you know, and I, I have, I, I will say I stepped into a couple of them and some of uh, the reps are a little down, a little depressed, not that excited. And then, you know, showing the products, which the fact of the matter is the industry is down uh, pretty significantly. So if it weren't for what I've now learned, I seriously, I had to do a Google search on PPE. They're going, PPE is what's hot. Well, what is it? Oh, Oh, personal protective equipment. So yeah. if you're selling masks and uh, <laughs> sanitizer, well, let's not even touch on that. Um, you know, then then it's hot. But uh, I, I think traditional uh, products. There are some people doing really creative things uh, uh, in in bundling packages where meetings were canceled. There are, there are some great things that can be done with product. Absolutely, but. When we look at uh, ASI, uh, the Ad Specialty Institute, you know, another key player in the industry has done some great reporting. Uh, you know, one was uh, reporting on 4 Imprint that your 
audience who's not in the industry may be getting those catalogs. Or it's a you know a supplier of promotional products on through catalog. I must have missed that. What's that? I think I I must have missed that one. Okay, well we did post it on the Free Primitives Facebook page. Um, just oh, really and um, they say eighty percent down. Eighty percent. Wow. And wow, were, wow, wow. You know, and I, I kind of almost didn't want to go, oh, my God, do we really go down that road? But we're just talking. And, uh, hey, you don't know what you're going to get from us. So, here, But these are, this is all published uh, stuff. There was, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. There was another one, three uh, mid-sized distributors down about 75%, one said. And wow. so when you look at it, you go, well, that's a lot of business that's just not happening. Um, and doesn't mean all this is not happening, but uh, I think people need to be focused on marketing. So when this does come back and it will come back, I think, for, what do I think? And it, what I think doesn't really matter, but my guess is it's it, business is going to come back. It's going to be less business. I think uh, suppliers, distributors, restaurants, bars, uh, you know, some are going to be challenged to come back, small independent businesses, which make up the bulk of our, our country. And, um, and these are the, you know, people that, uh, you know, gosh, I mean, interesting times. It's interesting. I agree. I think that Halo's doing a great job. They have some really creative ideas. Almost immediately, I say within a week, they had all the uh, in a box. A lot of be careful, honey. I thought they did a killer job. Today, I promoted um, Pro Towels had a really good one with the nurses, and they had three different designs on rally and beach towels. So right. that's wonderful. I love, um, I don't, you know, you know, I, I, I love our industry and I love other distributors. Gee, I'd never I, know. I, I never know that you have a passion for the industry. Could you maybe like elaborate? No, go ahead. No, and, but seriously, like, so like, you know, and I'm very thoughtful too. Like I, you know, um, I had interviewed Carmen from Fast Signs. And so, you know, I'm thrilled she's doing a lot of the signage for the graduation. I don't want to ever promote, put it this way. If I'm in a room, and there's a couple of other distributors and I feel like, well, maybe I'm not a member. I will then talk about professional global etiquette because I never want to try to take something from someone else. And, and that is why probably I'm a good mentor through SCORE. I do, you know, but with some suppliers and distributors, as you know, but it's, um, but it, I, there's no co competition to me. I feel like we all bring something different to the table. We're different areas. Before we go, I have to ask you though, I, I'm not saying we're going, but I want to, I have to know what's behind you. Cause I'm like totally curious. Oh, I see oh, your yeah. MAS. What, well, are the, uh, what are the, what are the lights? So I mean, pickles have to go out. Someone has to say pickles out. You might think that I run a little bit. Um, well, oh my God. No. So, uh, wait, 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 what's your favorite metal? No, wait, Jeff, go back to your metal. I want to see your favorite metal, the one that makes you so proud. Okay, they're, they're actually, they're actually two. Okay, Space Rock, dig this. Okay, this is a friends of ours who do uh, amazing metals, and, and uh, uh, it's always great. But I will say this. Here's one, and I, it's too hard to pull it off. It's the Wings for Life World Run. Okay, I'm going to touch on this. Because this is amazing. Wings for Life was underwritten by uh, Red Bull, and it was uh, uh, designed to benefit uh, people with spinal cord injuries. Apparently, the Red Bull, you know, extreme sports, you know, that's kind of what Red Bull is all about, uh, X Games, all that. And so apparently the owner uh, had somebody with a spinal cord in injury, and they wanted to raise money. And so they created this amazing event uh, called Wings for Life, and it was a world run. And what happened is – Everybody around the world, South America, uh, you know, Europe, Mexico, everywhere, all we all ran at the same time globally. And uh, we, like it was in Florida, it was in uh, I want to say Sunrise, Florida, uh, and then in uh, and then also in our town, Santa Clarita, California. So there's the West Coast, and then Florida, and then all around, all at the same time. So we started at like three in the morning. So our race was at three in the morning, and for you guys in Florida, it would have been like six, you know. So, uh, and and my wife was doing this at that time. I wasn't really running much because uh, I, many don't know, uh, but uh, I was a cripple for most of my life, and I had a, a, a ankle injury a dangler from uh, racing motocross, and I was crippled for many years until I had it fused. Uh, 
And then I started walking and then, then running. And so I relate to people with injuries and disabilities. And, and uh, I was just, uh, my wife goes, Hey, you know, let's, let's go, <laughs> let's uh, come out to, to this event. I'm going, what event happens at like three in the morning? And, uh, and as we were on our way there, I realized we went back by a few bars with park, park, crowded parking lots. I'm going, who's up at, at two in the morning? <laughs> Okay. I'm never out. That time. Nothing good ever happens at two in the morning. That's what mommy <laughs> says, you know. So uh, anyway, uh, I did have my ankle fatigues, and 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 so I uh, have been able to do all these amazing things. So Wings for Life was really uh, special for me. So I go there, and I wasn't intending to do anything, and and they go, yeah, you can sign up right here. So I was a uh, legacy runner for Wings for Life, and uh, uh, they did that for about three or four years, and. Now, it, I don't know, I think they do it virtually or in less spots, but we hated to lose that, but Wings for Life is special, so all those medals. That is so sweet. Oh, I love that. Do you know that I was on the um, We Are the World? I was in New York City holding hands in the, the 80s with We Are the World. I just so watched cool. that recently, seriously. I'm going, oh, look, We Are the World uh, came up on, on YouTube, and actually uh, part of the tracks of that were recorded in a, a friend of mine's studio that was owned by Kenny Rogers, uh, uh, and uh, and that's how I, I guess it came to me. He had posted uh, in Kenny's passing. There were a lot of things that happened, and um, well, my my good friend was in the uh, the first edition, which is Kenny's. You know, came out of the new Christy missiles. Anyway, they had a studio and recorded those tracks. And so I go, oh, I'm going to watch We Are the World, and that was like, really quite amazing. It was so amazing. All right, go back to the metal. So that's amazing. I was thinking they were lanyards, but I love that you keep oh, your medals. Yeah, no, the medals you know, somebody, oh, look. Wings for Life, I did. We can't see them all. One, two, three, four of those. Oh, those are your numbers. Yeah, yeah, these are. Oh, the, I thought they were like license plates. Oh, that's oh, yeah. so, and so. And the other thing is uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, this one. Down and dirty obstacle race with all the mud on it. I don't know if you can see that. I, I mean, can. That's awesome. Pretty cool. We're with Jay, Jay Leno and James Worthy. Anyway, but. um. Down and dirty. Okay, another thing where um, uh, when we talk about life, I want this to relate to other people. It's not like about me. Oh, look, I did this. You know, my hope would be for the few people that might be watching this. Is this, this is not like not about me, but it's about uh, maybe encouraging other people. So uh, friends of mine said, "Oh, yeah, the obstacle races, mud races. You know, many know about Spartan and and." Uh, and just mud events in general. And this was uh, an event we had out here. And they go, yeah, Jeff, you can do it. Well, this was like a brutal, I mean, we are like on this mud thing and obstacles. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And then I saw this big hill and uh, I'm going, well, that must be for the, the 10K, not the, the smaller, the, I don't know, the shorter one. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we're going up that hill. And, and frankly, I wouldn't have made it. I had it not been for a couple of people who really, you know, really supported me, I would have quit. Seriously, I, I would not have uh, done it. And, and sadly, uh, one of those uh, uh, people had lost her life tragically. It's another old story we're not going to touch on. But uh, you know, my, my friend Amy and and uh, uh, and Mark, who led me through it. So the point is, they, they held my hand. They got me through it. And I think that's the same way with, with challenges and in life. And of course, I've also got my Lord, I can, I can handle you and I can handle anything together. So, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, sometimes as we look at life's challenges and things like that, you know, whether it's our faith, our friends, our family, you know, they, they pull us up and we're able to accomplish things that we never, you know, maybe thought possible. Gosh, we're getting like sensitive here. Um, but I don't want that, you know, if I'm doing an interview like this, this is like not about me. I want somebody to maybe walk away with something positive because I got nothing. I'm just a guy here in California trying to, trying to do what I do. What is, so actually I have a question for you. So when you say they, like, so for me, I'm thinking they're going to help me. They're, they're actually dragging me up the hill. Like, I'm following. but are you saying no, like no. word encouragement is what they're doing or are they literally yeah. like, Okay. Yeah, if it wouldn't have been if it wouldn't have been for them, they they'd not drag me. And and surprisingly, <laughs> I was able to crawl over those obstacles. I mean, it, it was I don't know. I, I much respect to my Spartan friends and and the people who do all these uh, you know crazy uh, things. And and I I, I, know, I find myself hanging our uh, runners lane group. And uh, uh, shout out to my misfit runners. Okay, we're gonna be sharing this. <laughs> I, I, oh, I should have worn my misfit, my misfit shirt. And um, 
And while we're on the subject of, uh, of well, we're just taking it where we want to go because, like I said in the beginning, you, you know, you're going to get what you're going to get. Okay, so here's the deal. We, we have a group of people. It, it is the Misfits. Uh, you know, we're just out there. We love our Santa Clara runners. We love our runners lane team and all that stuff. But then we have the Misfits. And so the Misfits decided, you know, we want to do some shirts. I don't have the shirt here. But, uh, well, it's in the other room. But um, so uh, shout out uh, to uh, Blue Monster Promotions. And why am I drawing a blank? You know Blue Monster is in Florida right there. You don't. Now I feel. Now, okay, a racist. Uh, I screwed up. Uh, uh, Nurse Blue. Come on. Anyway, great designer. He did me a favor and did a design. And so we wanted to have. Uh, uh, Wait, that Blue Sky. Are you talking Blue, blue Sky design? No, uh, Blue Monster. Hey, all that, all that. Uh, I'm not going to go there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Am I drawing a blank? Anyway, okay. So God bless him for the design. So anyway, we're doing this thing, and it's a, the SCB Misfit Runners. And and because after our run, we go and we have coffee. And so there was a coffee thing that he put in there. It looked really quite cool. And then, uh -huh. uh, well, and then so he goes, we need we need a wine glass, you know? So uh, we added this wine glass in. So there was coffee on one side, wine on the other side. And so anyway, it, it created I have to see that. Oh, my God, take well, a picture of it. I will show it to you. Uh, I want to see. Uh, why am I drawing a blank? Don't worry about that. I have a question for you. So turn around again. I want to know what is the picture above everything? There's a picture. What is the picture of? Okay. So what we have here is James is Worthy. Uh, <laughs> I was in the sporting goods business. And gosh, I look young and thin there. That's kind of weird. And then, uh, and then this one was, this is really pretty cool. So, um, you recognize this guy with the big chin? Jay Leno. Jay Leno. So we Who's were really glad some, some friends of ours um, from New York worked with, at the time, uh, Tom Brokaw, and they set us up because NBC, you know, NBC is NBC, and so um, uh, they were in uh, – uh, California, and they hooked us up, and uh, we got to see Jay and and meet him, and we had printed up some T-shirts. It was his fifth anniversary at that time, oh, and wow. we were able to get that picture, and uh, one of them downstairs is signed. So anyway, um, but, you know, so, yeah, the, oh, and Frizz Freeling over here. Frizz, he was a friend wait, of my look. Oh, wait, what? the animator. Okay, yeah. So, so this wait. is... Where is where, oh, where is it's up there? Oh my god, I see that. Oh, wait, that's a Fritz Freeling. Is that the Pling Panther? Oh, oh my god, probably oh my god. if it wasn't signed, right? His, his daughter is on Facebook. Oh my gosh, his daughter is um, Hope. Hope, I'm gonna look it up right now. I will, oh my god, she'll love to see that. When I had the gallery, she told me that if anyone bought anything, she would be happy to sign it. And her, do you know who she is? No. She, she her name. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now. Hold on, this is so interesting. Oh, I got sidetracked oh, on the beautiful piece. That is a beautiful piece signed by Mr. Freeling. Wow. So she is. Um, well, maybe she's not my friend anymore. <laughs> uh -oh. She was. She yeah. was. Hope. Yeah. Is that weird? I don't see her now. I hope she's okay. Yeah, wow. I, don't I, know. Have, uh, I have a hand drawing of Bugs Bunny on a napkin that he drew. Um, that's framed somewhere. Um, he, My mom met him on a cruise, <laughs> and uh, he did it on a napkin and just drew Bugs Bunny um, from the cruise. But uh, last oh, one, hey, come on. It's so cool. Okay, and my wife, she'll be watching this. Go, oh, my God, there he is with the friggin' judge shows. You know, okay. The People's Court, you might remember this guy. We did some stuff. Oh, there it is. Judge Wapner, come on. Now we got Judge Judy. Really got Judge so we did some stuff for his, you know. Wait, was that, was, that, was that nationwide? What? Uh, people's the show? Court. You don't know Judge Wapner? Oh, my gosh. I think I heard the name before. Now it's Judge I'm a judge show guy. Sorry. You're so you're you're lucky you're in California. So wait, so you're so California, you know, really will be its own country pretty soon, right? I'd be like, oh, are you going to the uh, country yeah. of California? 
Yeah, we'll be on. Florida will be split. You'll be because Florida will be now North Florida or South Florida, and we'll be two different states. So I see that happening. But so things are so different where you are. And it's crazy. And you kind of knew you were kind of um, like it was California doing things first. It felt to me like, OK, California shut the state first down. Yeah. Right? California, you, like, yeah. I think we got to jump on the thing and shutting things down. I think that's why it's not been as tragic. Um, you know, New York, the tough situation because it's so dense. And uh, and it, it, it's, it's interesting. We. Um, we we're so blessed because we have this open space and we were we did have a call with some friends of ours that we met on a cruise many years ago it's amazing how in seven days you build a relationship with people um you know i, I pray the cruise industry comes back and princess cruises is in our in our own backyard their headquarters and all that stuff but anyway we met friends and they live in manhattan and we visited them and they visited us and so we we called them uh last week and you know, to check in on the, and they're, they're in Manhattan. So we've been in their apartment. We've stayed there and they have a very nice apartment with a bakery downstairs, like a typical, you know, Manhattan. And, and I go, yeah, you know, uh, it's gotta be challenging because it is so dense there. And, you know, here, as you know, we have space in a park and, and Peg goes, we have central park. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They're a block from central park, but it's like, you know, we're going, yeah, I have Canyon country park over here. You know, it's like, whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, we have Central Park, right? Like the most famous park, perhaps, in the world, you know. But I, I have no idea what that must be like now. I mean, but anyway. Oh, I think they made it with a field hospital. You know, that was the thing with China, too. Because when people think of China, they think it's so crowded. But China, every community has these amazing parks. Um, good, good, good. And save me some food. So uh, China has oh, some amazing nice. And so it's very, it's very, and we're, 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 my Sammy, my son, Sam was here from Shanghai and he's like, my God, you live in like the country. You're, it's like a bumpkin country, but it's Florida. And most people think Florida, they think of Orlando and how busy it is, but Daytona beach, we're very quiet here. I mean, it, it is like just so, it's just so quiet, but I want to ask you, um, first of all, I don't want anyone to know, so I so just very. But I I did book a cruise for Alana and I uh, August third, <laughs> but I don't want to tell anyone. But it's kind of funny, right? So like, okay, you don't want to tell anyone. Nobody's but watching. Nobody will know, right? But uh, it was, such a great price. it was such a great price. Four nights, and it was like I'm like I I got to do it because why not, right? It was just what did you book for. I booked uh, it to Carnival because I had so many because now I'm like in that higher thing. So it was very cheap. And I mean, for four Where nights, it'll be the worst. Oh, Bahamas and uh, yeah, the Bahamas and the private island. I like going with my daughter because um, because she doesn't drink <laughs> and I'm not really a drinker. So, you know, sorry, D, if my girlfriend D is watching, she's probably like, really, Adrian? But I don't drink, so Alana's nice and easy. Like if I say let's take a nap so we can stay up late, Alana's like she'll do that. Or if I say you want let's let go to the midnight buffet, she's like right next to me. So she's the easiest to hang out with. But your friend that the person that you knew from Santa Clarita, the the man oh, yeah. that was and oh my gosh, I followed him before you even said something. I was watching his um, his live on Facebook because he was he was reporting, and it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, our friends um, uh, here in Santa Clarita, um, the Goldmans, they own the local uh, KHS radio station. Amazing uh, oh. people do amazing things in the community. And so they were on the princess ship that was uh, quarantined in Japan. And he was one of the first uh, people. He actually got the virus or got a fever on the the charter, well, the jet that was flying back, the military 747, he got 103 fever. They're just going back and all of a sudden he gets sick and then they move him to the back of the the quarantine plane, and then when we landed in California, they then took him to Omaha, Nebraska, which was that uh, infectious disease center, and um, and so he was there for quite some time. And there's a whole story there. There they are back now. In fact, just this week, it was the other day where well, they were on the news because they actually I don't know how they got there. Maybe for commercial to the White House. They were sitting in a room. Um, uh, it's on. It's it's out there. Um, her, him and his oh. wife Jerry. Uh, Carl and Jerry were there at the West and they have a big wide table. They're all spread out and they were interviewed some other people who had had uh, different stories. Um, wow. Kind of like, yeah. So um, yeah, it was, it was, nice. he, he was in quarantine for quite some time. 
his personality, like I, I was, I was like, all of a sudden there was a point of time where I had to, I watched everyone live and I was so impressed with how, how everyone was taking it in stride and nobody was like, they were just all nice and understanding. And, you know, and some people didn't even have the right medication and they, but they were just, it was just crazy how calm and nice and kind everyone stayed on the princess. Yeah. And, uh, and these people were really amazing. He was so funny. You know, he talked about, uh, one of the jokes was buy stock in Coke because they own Gatorade, which was the primary medicine he had uh, during the early days. And then the other joke that was great, and people don't, they're not, your audience isn't going to get this, but he had a stash of plastic straws. And the people in Omaha, Nebraska, didn't understand why plastic straws were like, you know, evil or, you know, you, you know, they're banned in California. We're in California. So plastic straws are bad. Created an entire category in the, uh, Promotional products industry for straws, which is great. Yeah, it's Dan yeah, Webb, yeah. You did a great job, man. Dan Webb, web company for straws, all good. Amazing, amazing. We don't really. Um, it's weird because we're on the beach, so Daytona Beach and Ormond Beach, and some, but there's still, yeah, still, I see a little plastic, but mostly paper straws. I have, um, I have, I, I just bought a lot of 150 colored paper straws because she likes drinking everything through a paper straw. That's so funny. That is really the fun part about our industry too, is that we kind of are in the, like, so they, all the companies are retrofitting their machines. And I realized in the beginning too, I'm like, you know what? It's not a matter of like people saying, well, I, you know, stay in our own lane and don't, we shouldn't be selling the PPE. My thought is, wait a second, customers, if you go online, if you just play yourself and you say, I want to get a hundred masks for my employees and you go online, it's scary because you're going to order from places that you don't even know. And you're giving right. your credit card out to companies. And why wouldn't you want to order from someone that you respect and you can, um, you know, has a good reputation and are going to be dependable. And so, you know, I, I studied it. I went on the SGS testing so I could understand Halo's doing an amazing job every day of keeping us informed, which I think is great. And yes, it takes a little bit of more time because so many people need them. And the, but like it is working. And even hand sanitizers. No, there's really no. Hand, I actually got hand sanitizers from um, from a company that I'm not supposed to say it. So it's Malaluka, but I don't know why I can't say it. They're gonna shoot me. But anyways, I got two bottles and I got some smaller bottles. I sent to my niece. She had nothing in uh, Palm Beach. She had nothing to clean with and zero hand sanitizer. So I was able to take care of her for a little bit. But anyway, so we have to learn something new, but I never thought of it like, oh, I'm so horrible selling masks. I'm like, you know what? I sell masks because it's needed and we could trust our suppliers. And right. that's the number one thing. It's just, you have to know who you're trusting, but it's a, it's a slow process. That's for sure. Exactly. Yeah. You got to go, go with companies that you can trust. I see a lot of the uh, just people popping in our forums and going, yeah, I can get them. I can get them. They're, you know, they're uh, off, you know, overseas, you know, companies, but, you don't know. You don't know what's in that sanitizer. You know that's, you know that's that's an important yeah. one. So you want to deal with a responsible company, uh, uh, preferably U.S. company. Although their production is quite backed up, but you're going to get good, yeah. you know, good stuff. Well, and Claire was saying from Techwell. Claire was saying, well, Adrian, now we have a problem with the plastics because getting those plastic bottles are very very difficult now because we have a plastic shortage. Yeah, all of a sudden now plastic, the single-use plastic bag that you couldn't go in the store, you had to bring in your bag, now you can't use those, so now you got to use the plastic bag, you know, I mean, whatever, now we're back to plastic bags, whatever. In our industry, I always tell people too, we have over 800,000 items, maybe a million, whatever, that you we have to know and understand, <clears throat> but that promo show, I really think that like other industries would really get a kick out of it. How they put it together. So you're literally kind of like this. And then you would be, I would be talking to you and you're like running your booth and then you're just taking products here, Adrian, look at this. And it's, it's, I don't know. I am hoping that every other industry is mm -hmm. doing that because that it's, I mean, yes, I can't touch it. I can't feel it, but that's easy enough that you're going to mail it to me, but it is the most brilliant kind of marketing and way to um, adapt to what's happening is to do that promo show. And I love that it's on their time. Yeah, and I think the question will be is what does the trade show look like in the future? And as I said earlier, you know, will we ever see um, 
you know, the vibrancy of our PPI Expo, which, you know, I'm praying that, you know, will still continue to be, uh, you know, the industry gathering place because it's unique. I mean, there are many regional trade shows that are great for connecting, but um, I think the PPI Expo is more of just kind of more like a gathering place. There's, you know, obviously lots of education, but it just it's just different. That particular event in Vegas in January is special. Uh, and, uh, you know, will it be smaller, you know, probably. Um, Paul uh, uh, Bellantone from PPI and Tim Andrews did a great, um, oh uh, you know, uh, um, webinar on, on, you know, what, what's happening. And we were, I was looking forward to, I work with all made an amazing apparel company and we were uh, working on a uh, fundraising event uh, for the ASI show in Chicago, which would have been July. And that's obviously off. So I was disappointed about that because we, we could have done some really great things and, uh, and we will continue to, I, I just think the landscape will be different. Um, as we go forward, but part of it might be, Hey, we can do these virtual things and look at how much money we're saving and travel and blah, blah, blah. You know, I think that, I think you'll see more of that, uh, you know, and and that's that's fine, but still, uh, and also, hey, the handshake's dead. Oh, oh my God, Liam, I love the yeah. handshake's dead. Seriously, you're not going to go to a trade show and hug and shake a person's hand anymore. No. Oh yeah, no, I, I wrote the article the other day, and Leah just wrote on the last uh, conversation that you know the heart on the head. Some people, I think it's, I think now I'm going to say it again. You got to stand up when someone approaches you to say hello. Be the first person to stand up because people weren't standing up very well. You know, and, and that's not just my, you know, it's just not celebration or Miami or Tucson. It's like all over. If you could sit and then just like shake a hand, that's not going to elevate you. So you really literally elevate yourself, get up out of the seat, you know, maybe handing out something antimicrobial now. So actually I wrote an article and I included the uh, handstands, um, little buff in the back of the phone or even handing out something like this. You know, where you're like, because this way you're giving something someone so they can remember your name, speaking your name clearly, you know, asking Jeff, how do you spell Jeff? Because, oh, you can spell Jeff many million ways, right? So, you know, when you meet someone and then if you want to say, you know, okay, like, oh, you know, so nice to meet you. But I, I think that it makes sense that we're changing. I also think, our, like, I'm curious, I feel like we're being rushed to get back to work which is not a bad thing, but I feel like right now, like everything I'm hearing, it feels like, okay, in two weeks, we're going to be back and good because I need to fix these bangs here and really, but anyways, but um, but I see networking being a little different, like that maybe we're not necessarily going to be in, you know, all together in a room. I, I don't even know what that looks like, wearing our mask, introducing our, eating lunch together. Excuse me. <laughs> But I will yeah, tell you, I, I don't know if I like, uh, you know, we don't, we just don't know. Like, I'm curious about. I, I I want that show. Did I ever tell you that I was on the bus? I did the ASI Road Show. Oh, you did really? Yeah, I did, and um, and I did, and it was fairly expensive. And what we wanted to do is, I the last hour was going to be for um for the distributors. But I, I had a whole idea. It was going to be the color of promotional products. Every distributor would have a specific color so that their clients would be wearing that color. But And so the whole thing had it in my head. So I got a chance to, went up to like Massachusetts, got on the bus. Uh, Damon was uh, Damon was there, Charity's uh, fiance and a few other, you know, there was just so much fun being with everyone and really getting a feeling of what it would be like to watch them every morning they had to get up and they had to get dressed and eat a little something and go to their booth and set up their booth and then they an hour that you know i would have where nobody came in because it wasn't really what i had thought i didn't have that kind of connections to get everyone in five cities to come after the hour but i really wanted to have the local distributors do it but whatever um and then and D mr nick d nicola nick was amazing because he has a really cool story about how he was in show business so very very cool and then I remember the funniest one was the young man from the Akuzi company. And he he got so drunk that they found him in the like the middle of the night. He didn't know which room he was in. And he was just wearing his underwear. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, well, well to be a road. So oh my gosh. And you're exhausted at the end of it. And then they go home and then they're doing it all over again. I mean, it was it's kind of amazing. Wow. So I think we need to end this on a more optimistic note, though. We got to move to another topic and like in the, like not this drunk guy running around his underwear.
We got to do better. I, I what, love what that vision. <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's a great story. It's just not what we're going to close with. You know, we got to okay. close with something big. Let's go big. Wait, so close with clothes? Can't, don't close with no clothes. So, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, you need to. Okay, so you need to do a bit, um, you know, on, well, you already have in part on uh, Zoom etiquette and all that. You might have seen the video where the guy's in a meeting, he walks away, he's got no pants on, you know, yeah. uh, type of thing. I think there, there is something you said. We were on a meeting with our California state senator, um, uh, business group in our community, and it was really great. But <laughs> there's one guy, you know, he was, he was eating and it's cool because it was drinking and people were eating and dinner, but this one guy is just slurping up with that chopsticks, some Chinese food. And it was more like, it was, <laughs> it was Oh like, my God. That's after, funny. After, after Zoom faux pas. So, uh, so here I'll, I'll play business etiquette. If you're going to be in a Zoom okay. you know, meeting, you know, you would just, you know, you just, you know, you need from Disney. You wouldn't necessarily slurp up pasta, you know, too close. You know, you don't want to get too. Uh, you I know. took a bite. Too I took a bite of my when you were talking. Too, too much. But um, in any event, uh, there you go. Dinner time. It's almost lunch time for me. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, all right. Jeff, I love you. <laughs> I love talking to you. I love when we communicate together. I love. I want people to know that we are not afraid of each other. We're not afraid of sharing information to each other. No. And just like Walgreens and CVS are beautiful across the street from each other, the same thing. We all get along. It's a lovely industry. I'm so happy to be part of it for 35 years. I see your MAS up there, your um, award, and oh, I have yeah. mine. A master advertising specialist, you know. So I threw a bunch of classes to get there, you know. So it's all good. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I, it really is. You know what? We, we're, I'm proud of it. I use my initials all the time. It's something that we've worked hard to, to do. And so, and then between you and I and our relationship, I love it. I love, I, you know, even when I was in Tucson, Arizona, and you're allowing me to, uh, to do the keeping oh, my right. fingers in the yeah. curation, mm -hmm. that was lovely. So I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for being someone that I just appreciate so much. We share so many of the same friends, right. which is great. And um, you know, it's not it's not a bad thing that Paul is so good looking either. I mean, hey, I'm not the only person <laughs> in the world. And Tim Andrews is such a lovely man. And every time I see Mr. Cohen, I blabber and cry like a baby. Norman I Cohen, do. ASI, father of ASI. I mean, he's amazing. Um, I was blessed to get a picture with him uh, recently. Oh, it's in uh, Fort Worth. I got a picture with him, and he's just um, a great, gracious man. And um, so anyway, there's some great people in our industry. So uh, thanks for all you're doing with this. Uh, meet, meet your friends. I, I uh, you know, I imagine we bored many people because we're just sitting there chatting and like, who really cares? But you know, just tune up. You know, he said nobody's for nobody's uh, forcing anybody to watch this. And if you watch it, we hope it hasn't been too painful. Uh, and you know, hopefully. Uh, would you stop? Would you stop? I get like thousands of mail. <laughs> I, no, I, I want to say something about the Jeff video. It's like, oh yeah, that guy. Oh, what well, would you do with him? But actually, I love this idea. I love this hashtag. Show off your friends because this is something that really is. And I, I'm so thrilled. Carmen is doing it. So I got. I'm going to go off and watch her show. So to get to know other people really is valuable. So I feel like uh, every you do it, just do one. Show off your friends, and I would love to watch. And I love you. Have a good rest of the day and night. All right. Thanks. God bless all you guys. Here's the better days ahead. I love it. Love it. May I share your uh, post tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go off and eat my, um, my whatever I made, chicken pot pie. Ooh. Great dinner. Right, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thank you, Jeff. That was amazing.